Hi students! This is video one of a series of videos that will explain to you how to write a magical realism short story. Since the process can be a little long, um, the videos have been broken into more easily digestible videos that will focus on one part of the plot structure. So you'll have a video about the exposition, a second video about the rising action, a third video about the climax, a fourth video about the falling action, and then a fifth video about the resolution or conclusion. Now to start with, please make sure that your story has a proper header. In the actual heading of the document, you should put the page number and last name. The way that you do that is by putting insert, page number, top of page, and then the number and type your last name in front of that number. This way, on each page, your last name and page number, page number will appear. Then, just at the top of the page, not in the header, you should put your name, the teacher name, the class name, and the date. And make sure not to put in the header, but the actual body of the essay, so that it only appears on the first page. And last but not least, please make sure that you have a title. You may double space your essay if you would like. It's almost preferable because it makes it easier for me to grade and read. However, for the sake of this video, I did not double space the story so that we could see more text in one screenshot. Now, let's begin looking at the exposition of this story. So the exposition reads, the end of the world, some apocalyptic event was nearing. So from the very beginning, we see the element of heightened mystery. It says that it's the end of the world, some apocalyptic event. So by not defining what's causing the apocalypse, by using the word some, this creates heightened mystery. Because it is not clear what's actually causing the problem. This causes readers to become curious and wonder why the world is in so much danger. Then the essay reads, it became clear when the natural world began to separate itself from mankind. The spiders that lingered in the corner of my ceilings and the ants that journeyed from crevice to crevice of my kitchen disappeared to the green grassy lawn one morning. The hummingbirds that sank gently to drink upon the sugar water of my bird feeder took to the blossoms of the pink petunias. The neon tetra, acai chichlids, and banana fish living in the freshwater tank in my living room jumped against the glass of their confinement with such ferocity that they are dead within minutes. Their vividly colored bodies of cerulean, scarlet, and golden yellow floated at the top of the tank like the pieces of tissue paper my niece used to make a pinata for my last birthday. I stood in mid-sip of coffee, immediately disturbed by the image of my dead fish. So the author does a lot here. One of the primary things that the author does is establish a real world setting. So it has the same kind of little pest that we might find in our house, a spider. That is part of the world that we live in as well. So it's a part of our real world setting. It also includes ants which helps establish the real world setting. Next, it has birds drinking from bird feeders. We have bird feeders in our real world. And also, he has a freshwater fish tank, which is something that we have in our real world. And last but not least, it has things such as pinatas, and also, and maybe most importantly, coffee. So we can see from these little details that this is the same world that we live in. It has the same things that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis. So when you're describing your real world, don't feel as though you have to clarify that it's Chicago or that it's taking place in China. Um, you don't have to name the place. You also don't have to say that there are skyscrapers or something big. You can use small details or you can use big details, or you can name places if you so choose. 
to establish the real world setting, but don't think that it's one way or the other. You have a variety of ways to show that this is the same world that we live in. Now, another thing that the author does in here is they use plentitude. If you look at the level of description that they use, there's a great deal of imagery, neon tetra, this type of fish that I can't say, and banana fish. Um, they're described with their colors of cerulean, scarlet, and golden yellow. This imagery plays into plentitude. Another thing that plays into plentitude is the number of animals that are rejecting the world. The spiders are leaving, and the ants are leaving, and the fish are killing themselves trying to leave. The hummingbirds are also leaving. So it's this mass escape of all these different animals that are causing the plentitude to grow. So remember that plentitude is a building of ideas that reach a more and more extreme level. So here we have this with the animals trying to escape. Now, outside of just using the magical realism elements that are required in your story, this also does the same things that every beginning of every story traditionally does if we're talking about traditional plot arcs. So it establishes a setting, and it establishes our main character, the narrator himself. And it also establishes the conflict, which is the end of the world. So we have our conflict. We have our character. Where is he? Does he say I somewhere? Right here. We have our character. And then we also have our setting, which is the whole thing. Oh, I'm not going to highlight the whole thing. So that's essentially what your exposition should do. If it does some or all of these things, you're going to be sitting pretty pretty. However, one thing I do want you to take into consideration is where you start your story. Since the story isn't supposed to be incredibly long, you're going to need to start in an exciting moment. The story doesn't open with him brushing his teeth or waking up in the morning or doing something dull that's not really anything that anyone would want to read about. It's starting where the story starts to get interesting. It starts by stating the world is ending, and then it goes into the animals doing these weird things. So make sure that with your exposition, you start kind of in the middle of your story, right when it's getting good, so that you have more room to flesh out the exciting parts as opposed to spending all that time on boring parts. Now, that's kind of the 101 on how to write your exposition for your magical realism story. So go ahead and write your own. I look forward to reading it.